What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Summit Tech once again, and today I have a super budget mining rig for you in 2018. Yes, you can build a mining rig in 2018 for less than $1,000 and get pretty decent ROI, so stick around. So this is all based around the GT1030. Yes, you heard me right. We are going to be purchasing eight GT1030s, specifically the Gigabyte fanless models. You can go with the fan models if you prefer. Uh, I'm having no issues with the fanless, just with two 140 millimeter fans blowing directly on them. You'll see the temperatures here in a second. They're going to run you about $79 a piece and they're pretty easy to pick up and in stock almost everywhere. So awesome we have an in stock part. Now the motherboard I used was actually the OctoWiner that I already had in stock and that's going to run you about $199. However, you will have to pre-order that for the third batch that's currently coming out here soon. Now the other option that you can get is the ASUS Prime Z270A and then an M.2 adapter and you can get up to seven of these cards. And there are some other options as well. I'll try to leave ones that are actually in stock and not ridiculously overpriced for you in the description below. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep things cheap. So as far as all of your storage, etc., I'm just gonna recommend that you go ahead and pick up a little 16 gigabyte USB stick. I picked mine up for about $8 on Amazon. So you can pick that up pretty easily as well. And it's not gonna run you too much money. Now the other thing that you're gonna to wanna to pick up is going to be memory. The board that we're using currently actually uses SODIM and it uses DDR3, which you can pick up for about $20. Now if you're using the ASUS Prime Z270, you're gonna to have to add another $20 on to that total cost just because DDR4 is going to be a little bit more expensive and going to have you coming in at around $40. But all in all, if you add the power supply in on top of that with a breakout board that I got from Parallel Miner, which is the 750 watt version, which will run off of 110, so you don't have to worry about any 220 conversion or anything like that. And it comes with the entire kit with the six pin adapters then you're going to only have to spend about $80. Now your other option to be completely honest with you guys is to just pick up something like a TR2430 from Thermal Tank. Uh, you're especially going to have to do that if you pick up a standard motherboard. Now the reason the server power supply motherboard works with the OctoMiner real great is that the OctoMiner is all powered off a of 6 pin PCIe. So there's no need for a 24 pin motherboard power supply. Um, but this kind of works itself out because while on the ASUS uh, you're going to be spending about 40 or $20 more on memory, you can actually cut the cost down with this particular build from the around $70 or $80 by about $40 and pick yourself up a little $35 power supply. Now I would recommend spending a little bit more extra and getting something, you know, 80 plus rated. But all in all, no matter how you cut this cookie, because of the graphics cards taking up a majority of the cost, you're going to be under 1,000 US dollars. And altogether, we're going to go ahead and hop in and take a look. After we do mention that the case I decided to put it in was the t case from V1 Tech, and he is actually coming out with a 12 GPU bracket that's going to look pretty good. It's a very versatile case. I was able to even mount the Octo Miner in there with a little bit of, you know, gumption and and uh what macgyvering that's what i'll call it we actually ended up just using two uh pieces of wood and then zip tying it to the bottom i still think it looks really clean i just need to get a mount or get the mount on the front a little bit uh, a little bit worked on so i can bring it out i just need to get some spacers and then i'll be able to actually screw the gpus into the mount itself which will be ideal for this build and then underneath it i just put the power supply and mounted it down there and then ran the cables up nice and clean. So my cable management is awesome. Of course, we're gonna have to get some RGB fans to go ahead and round this out, but let's not dig into the ROI too much. All right, so follow me over here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so for today, we're going to be using Hive OS. If you haven't checked out Hive OS before, I will go ahead and put a link up in the corner for you guys to go check out 
how to actually image HiveOS for yourselves. Now I mentioned this because I don't wanna actually go through that today, but we do need to go through the options for all of our wallet configuration here. The particular coin that we're gonna be going with is going to be GoByte, which you can check out at gobyte.network. And it is a NeoScript coin, and that is a very key thing here. If you're gonna be building this rig, make sure that you're looking at coins that are NeoScript, because that's where the GT1030 really shines. Hopping into the configuration, you're going to want to essentially configure your Hive OS as follows. Go ahead and put yourself a name in there. You can go ahead and put your email if you wish. And then you're gonna to want to put your wallet address in the D wallet address. So you'll download the GoByte wallet, which you can grab over here under downloads for whichever operating system you prefer. Get your wallet address and then just place it into the wallet address. The miner you're gonna to wanna to go with is CC miner. Now pay close attention here. The miner fork is very important because there's been a lot of misrepresentation of what the GT1030 is actually getting in NeoScript because people are typically using TP or they're using the Alexis. Now, there are two particular forks that work really, really well. One is Klaust and the best is SPMod. Klaust will get you up into the 200s kilohash a second per GT1030, while SPMod, well, I'll show you that here in a second. The hash algorithm is going to be NeoScript and your wallet and worker template will be once again your wallet address and then a period and then the name of the rig, however you wanna name that out. If you have any questions about any of these configurations, you can always click the little I next to them and it'll bring up you know template examples for you to check out. The next is to pick a pool. For today, we're gonna to be using the GoByte official pool at us.us1.gobyte.network colon the port 4233. Make sure you include the stratum in here and then click OK. So GoByte is the name of the game here and that's what we're really going to be initially taking a look at. Now let's go ahead and talk about exactly how much hash we're getting. So popping over into our miner with VNC viewer, which you can download and actually just go ahead and get a remote session of the entire Hive OS, which is very, very handy. One of the things where Hive OS comes in a little bit nicer than simple mining is that it does have a full GUI and actually down here in the corner, which we'll be getting into, you can actually go into your Nvidia X settings. Now, when I was doing my initial research, people were saying that, you know, NeoScript doesn't get any benefits out of overclocking. Well, after doing some of my own testing and due diligence, I found that it actually benefits from both memory and core overclocking. So initially when you start this up, you're probably going to be around 220 kilohash per card. So uh, to go ahead and correct that and get the 240 kilohash per card that you're getting on the GT1030, the first thing I recommend doing is overclocking your core clock. And you can do this actually directly from your VNC session. There's more on this in my Hive OS video, or you can also do it through the actual session uh, in the web GUI, whichever one you prefer. I find this better for testing because I can do each individual card, figure it out, and then apply it as an overall uh, overclock in my actual Hive OS web GUI. Then it goes ahead and applies it on reboot. But for now, I have had it all applied in here. You can see that I've put a 200 uh, GPU clock core clock boost on this particular system and actually all the cards are running at that I haven't tried to tweak above that because at 225 on GPU zero it pretty much crashes out and it won't run now this has been running stable for probably uh, at least an hour and 15 minutes and I'll have to re-up with you guys if we have any more issues of course and we'll be doing a follow-up video to this just to cover profits so with that in place, we get anywhere between 235 and 238 kilohash a second. 
to get the extra boost that you see right now where we're getting up into the 240s, the next change we made was to the memory clock. And the memory clock we went ahead and applied was 600. Now with this 600 memory clock in place, we were able to get over 240 kilo hash a second per card. And on eight cards, that comes out to 1930 kilo hash a second. Can you believe it? Two mega hash on GT 1030s on NeoScript? Yes, pretty good stuff. So if we go ahead and pop on over to what to mine, we can go ahead and start placing in our numbers. This was a, a reasonable number from earlier, but just to give you guys an idea, let's go ahead and bump it up to the 1900 kilohash that we saw earlier. Power consumption, I haven't gotten my kilowatt on it yet, but every card's max power is going to be 30 watts. So if we take 30 times eight, we get around 240. And currently I'm on that Pentium, so it's super low. It's a mobile Pentium, so it's like a 15 watt system. So I figured I'd go ahead and go a little over and stick us at about 300 watts there. My cost uh, per kilowatt hour is nine cents per kilowatt hour in the city. So calculating that out, we can scroll down here and see that, keep in mind, this is always changing, but we can see that on GoBite, we're looking at, well, projected profits of $4.65 a day. And I do wanna go ahead and clarify, of course, that that means we're gonna to have to go back through and confirm this after a 30 day period. But even some of the other ones that I find more interesting because some of them are masternode coins. Innova is one, Crowdcoin is one, Vivo is one I've had a very close eye on recently as well. And I know a lot of people have been talking about Feathercoin too. So lots of good options and it's gonna range anywhere from two to five dollars a day and if you go ahead and calculate all of that out so what we can do here is I have a notepad here with the prices so let's go ahead and pull the calculator up as well and so I already ran this earlier but we have six hundred and forty dollars in GPUs we have two hundred dollars in motherboard and CPU we have another twenty dollars in memory and we have a ten dollar USB stick and a seventy five dollar power supply. That puts us at $945 total. So we know that we want to pay off $945, correct? So to figure out how long that's going to take us, let's just go ahead and divide 945 for shits and giggles by $4.65. So we'll go 945 if I can get my calculator to go where I want it buy by four dollars and 65 cents which is always changing but projected return would be 203 days divided by 30 is going to put us at almost seven months just short of seven months provided the market doesn't change at all so i keep hearing a whole bunch of fud thrown at mining these days and i just wanted to show you guys that even in 2018 that we can go ahead and build a budget mining rig and get you guys into hobbyist mining right away. The specific card that you're going to want to do this around is the GT1030 and you're going to want to be mining a NeoScript coin. It's a very, very good system. It's low power consumption, not to mention it has surprising good performance on NeoScript and doesn't do too shabby in some other algos, which we'll be taking a look at later. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and go ahead and purchase all of the products through my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. The only other affiliate link that will be down there is for Hive OS, and that actually just pays me out in Ethereum. I'm not getting any sort of kickback in Hive coin or anything like that. So full transparency there. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next Tuesday.